Okay, hello. And um, this is a, a video about setting Windows 98 up in uh, what is now Oracle VirtualBox uh, and getting it with good graphics drivers and sound drivers and actually useful for playing old games in. Um, I'm going to install and play an old game when it's all set up. Uh, the game I'm going to install and play is called Star Trek Generations. It's a game which does not work at all in Windows 7 or Windows XP. I think I've had problems with it in there as well. Uh, I was actually using Windows 7 at the moment to do this. Uh, there are a few things you're going to need to do this before we start. Um, first and foremost, you're obviously going to need Windows 98 disk to install Windows 98 from, and the serial code for Windows 98. Um, and you will need uh, probably this, which are the VirtualBox Visa drivers, RAIN 2.0, which prevents Windows 98 from eating all of your CPU, 7-zip, which will allow me to get into that zip archive, and SciTech Display Doctor 7, um, optionally a serial code for that, which will stop it from well, deactivating itself after 21 days. Um, now these VisualBox drivers, uh, you can see there's a VirtualBox folder here, which uh, you would automatically think, since we're using VirtualBox for the purpose of emulating Windows, that those would be the drivers you'd use. I actually recommend using the ones in the Uni folder for Universal instead. Um, the rest are unimportant. It doesn't matter whether you have an ATI card, an Intel chipset, an Nvidia card, you must use either the VirtualBox or, as I would recommend, the Universal drivers. The reason for this is that VirtualBox does not present your actual graphics hardware to the operating system. It presents its own variant, which is actually a standard Visa device. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, you don't need to. <coughs> to get these files into Windows 98, I used Magic ISO to create this Windows 98 Tools ISO. Uh, the process is pretty simple, and you can use the free version. Of Magic Oso to do that, so I need that, I need that, I need that, and I need that. We drop them into here, we go for File, Save, and we'll save it as that, and it'll overwrite the one I made earlier. Which is uh, all fine and dandy. And then you can mount that from within inside VirtualBox, and you'll get your files through. Um, the reason we have to work around like this is because Sun don't provide, Oracle now, don't provide the guest edition support for Windows 98 like they do for later operating systems. So, we've got everything we need, we've covered those. I'm going to fire up VirtualBox now. And you'll see I already have two Windows 98 virtual machines. These are two that I've set up earlier. i can delete this one actually. And we'll create a new one. Um, we're going to call it Windows 98 2. It's going to have Windows 98 in it. And I'll give it 128 megs of RAM. We'll create a new hard disk for it. Uh, it's important to go for dynamically expanding at this point. I've tried using fixed size, um, but it seems to have some problems when the setup wants to format the disk. And to be honest, I can't really see a good use for fixed size storage anyway, so we'll keep it as dynamic. Uh, I'm going to go for 4 gigabytes because I want to actually use it for more than one game. And it doesn't really take much, to be honest. Now, because I've already obviously got the Windows 98 2 VDI file, which was attached to the, one, to the virtual machine I just deleted, I'm going to call it Windows 98 3. Uh, you can call it Windows 98, you can call it whatever you like provided you know what it is when you come back to it later. So here we, we'll just check what's going on here. That's where it puts its hard disk, so this will be a uh, variable depending on what your Windows user actually is, and there's the size. So we press finish and it creates that. We'll press finish again and it will create the virtual machine there. Now this is the uh, virtual machine I actually use for my retro game, and you can see here some of the settings are different. Um, we're going to settings to reconfigure the machine after VirtualBox has populated it with some default settings. The main things we need to make sure are the video memory, 
which I'm going to set initially to 24 megabytes and we need to enable both of these boxes also for sound choosing Sound Blaster 16 is a better plan than choosing the AC97 driver because Windows 98 already has a Sound Blaster 16 driver in there so you don't have to mess about with uh, with AC97 drivers now this is optional but uh, you can choose your installation medium here already this is my Windows 98 disk so we'll select that uh, if you don't select it at that point then VirtualBox will ask you to select it when you start the machine so we'll boot it up now uh, with those settings in um, the rest of this, this this bit is actually pretty mundane you want to start from CD-ROM you want to start Windows 98 setup from the CD-ROM uh, if you've ever installed Windows before then this won't be new to you I will fast forward automatically through the uh, tedious bits a reboot at this point you want to boot from CD-ROM again and go back through it feels like restarting but uh, Windows 98 will immediately begin formatting what it calls the C drive uh, do bear in mind that this is not actually the C drive on your machine this is of course the uh, Windows 98 2 or 3 dot VDI file that I created a moment ago if you went for fixed size storage here then it just kind of stops at 0% when it's doing this and doesn't want to work so this is why we go for dynamic size um, it'll sit and wait for a second make sure what it's doing is correct and you can see down here um, this represents your hard drive access this is the CD drive access this is access to USB drives, network this icon shows that uh, I have nested paging and AMDV slash VTX which are the uh, hardware emulation software these icons indicate whether your pointer is captured or not which it currently isn't and this is the keyboard thing, so if I click here, you can see the mouse cursor thing lights up. I'll let it run through scan disk, and then we can go for Windows Setup. Now, <coughs> things with Windows Setup, uh, if you're in America, then you can probably select the defaults for this, but uh, because I'm not, as you can perhaps tell by the sound of my voice, um, I'm going to have to choose some custom options which may or may not be relevant to you if you're somewhere else um, and again you know you can select whatever you want for these options if you just want the defaults then you might as well just uh, go for typical typical installation uh, these are fairly irrelevant this is the thing I'm going to have to change because I have a different key map to the rest of the world it seems for British there I'll change my regional settings to English British. Again, this is only relevant if you're in England. If you're somewhere else, then choose your your, uh, your own regional settings. And if you're in America, you can probably skip that step entirely because the defaults will work for you. Now, file copy progress is um, not exactly interesting, so I'm going to skip this part and come back when it's finished copying files. Okay, so, um, when the setup is now finished copying the files, and this is what you immediately get afterwards, uh, I'm going to put some details in it, doesn't really matter. If you don't accept the agreement, then you don't get to use Windows, so it's good to accept it. I'm going to pause again here uh, and insert my serial code, which I have obtained. Um, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's a legitimate serial code, then I don't really care where you got it from. I just can't show you mine because I don't think YouTube would appreciate it. Okay, so this is immediately after putting in the serial code. Windows 98 saved all information and we will uh, finish off. Now, this is another slightly tedious part. Um, setting up any plug and play devices and then it starts detecting non plug and play hardware, which again takes a moment and I'm going to pause while it does this. Okay, so that's just finished. And now it wants me to restart so we can reboot it. And this will happen a lot. Now we want to reboot from the hard disk this time. 
again because uh, otherwise you'll have to start the setup all over again and there wouldn't be much point in that I would, uh, so uh, again just you know keep your wits about you it's not a complex procedure installing windows it never has been uh, it'll do this setting up stuff the next thing I'm going to pause on uh, in a minute is uh, setting the system settings thing this again you know just set your time zone to whatever time zone you're actually in um, that should match the time here should also match the uh, time in your host install if it doesn't then set it so it does um, again this this part isn't really complex and then it'll sit and do this for a couple of minutes I'm gonna pause again while it does this okay uh, that's now finished immediately next is restart again we'll do another reboot uh, again we want to boot from the hard disk because we're booting into Windows Ooh, background change around half hour one of those features of Windows 7 I particularly enjoy I've got a good 30 or 40 different images in, the, in that folder. I don't want to 